Welcome to Friday Night Rivals on My RDC. Tonight we're at Trentini Stadium where the Heritage Huskies take on the Wake Forest Cougars. Husky down, roll Cougs. Let's go! Papa John's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Arthritis Knee Pain Centers, brings us to Wake Forest and a vital game inside the neck. Perennial State Power Wake Forest, sitting 2-0 in the league, welcomes in the 1-1 Heritage Huskies. Hi once again, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Rivals. Patrick Keenis alongside former ECU standout Jay Sonhalter. Big matchup tonight. Last year, for the first time, Heritage knocked off Wake Forest. First time in school history. They started 0-6, a win last week. It would be a big opportunity for them to knock off unbeaten Wake Forest. This is one of the best in the state, Patrick. And with last year's ball game going down to the wire, Heritage winning it where the previous year's Wake Forest was the winner. All these players went to middle school together. The coaching staffs know each other. This is an important game with the playoff race coming up. So excited to watch both teams perform in this rivalry game. It feels like playoff football. Cool conditions here in Wake Forest. What kind of stars are we looking at tonight, Jay? Who do well, we two running backs into this ball game for Heritage. Ladaney in person is going to have to control the line of scrimmage and run physical in between the tackles. Get outside and use his, ed, his speed out on the edge. And they're going to use him in the passing game as well. He's a threat in all facets. And he's going to be a big part of tonight's game plan. Over on the other side for Wake Forest, Amari Cook has really stepped up this season, having a strong season, playing running back and safety on the offensive end. He's a home run hitter, someone they're depending on to get carries on the defensive end. He's an enforcer on the back end. All right, brutal non-conference schedules for both Wake and Heritage. So they're both coming in under 500. They both need a win. Wake's trying to get the 3-0 in league play. What are the keys? Well, the important aspect for Heritage is finishing their drives. When they get in the red zone, they want to finish with touchdowns. And on the defensive end, everybody flowing to the football. They've got to play together as one. And for the Cougars, offensive execution is going to be important. Picking up third downs and moving the ball down the field and down the defensive end. They do not want to allow the big plays over the top. They want to keep everything in front of them. All right, as Jay mentioned, all these players, they go back a decade. They've been teammates in middle school. Now they're on opposite sides of the gridiron. With more on the story and the backstory, third member of our team, Madison Little. Yeah, guys, in a game like this, anything goes. These two teams meeting for the 15th time in history, dating back to 2010 when Heritage High School opened their doors less than five miles from here. And because these schools are so close, these athletes, they know each other, they grew up together, and they even played football together prior to coming to high school. Head coach Wallace Clark for Heritage told me because of that, their season records out the window, this series record does not matter. These two teams are going to play their hearts out and get after each other for their community in front of their community tonight. He also told me Wake Forest, it's the type of place where they can be enemies right here, right now, but they'll all get together at the Waffle House down the street later as a family. It's the battle of neighbors when we come back right here on Friday Night Rivals. Just about ready for football. Heritage taking on Wake Forest. And now we're ready for the United States Marine Corps coin toss. Brought to you by the U.S. Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. Contact your local recruiter today. And that is Staff Sergeant Rod Robert Sutphin. And the coin toss won by Wake Forest. They have deferred. And Jay, the Heritage Huskies, just off of their first win of the year. They started 0-6. They will take the football. Yeah, and coming out here, I expect Heritage to be aggressive. And they've played such a tough non-conference schedule. And once you get into conference play, you know this is going to be one of the biggest games of the year when you're playing your rival. All right, ready for the NC Safe kickoff. NC Safe, if you own a gun, lock it up together. Let's keep North Carolina safe. Back to return, Ladani in person, our Heritage star, player star to watch, John Carella Pantaleon, and it'll be Carella Pantaleon on the return, and he will flip it off to Ladani in person, who swings to the outside, and with running room, he's out near midfield and angled out of bounds. So a design kickoff return, a little option play between Carella Pantaleon and person, the two playmakers, an excellent field position. 
for the Huskies. And that'll be a key tonight is setting yourself up with good field position. There's a little flip, getting the ball to person, and then he can get to the outside, use his speed, and break down angles to set up his first possession right at the 50 yard line. All right, let's talk Cole Perry, quarterback for the Huskies. He's thrown for 342 yards, no touchdowns yet through the air, six interceptions. Talk about his game management. What do you expect from him? Well, tonight it's going to be important for him to get out and use his legs. He's a really good scrambler, making good decisions against this physical and tough Wake Forest defense. It's person on the first play from a scrimmage for about three yards as we take a look at the Papa John's starting lineup for the Heritage Huskies offense. Papa John's better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John. Well, with Perry in person already, a couple touches, it's going to be important with the other skilled players to make sure they do a good job trying to get big plays with Wood Sutton, Winstead, and Carter. And then the offensive line of David, Davis, Evans, Venison, and those guys up front will have to really do a good job pushing the line of scrimmage. One second now, they lateral it back to Person. Nowhere to go to the right, so he quickly reverses field. And look at the shiftiness of Person. He'll turn a negative play into a game of about six, and it is now third and short. And the Papa John's starting defense for Wake Forest. Well, up front, 3-4 defense with Wilbert, Haynes, and Perry, a strong defensive line, then fast linebackers with Nichols, Moore, Balkus, and Debnam in the back end. They're physical with Norris, Cook, Pringle, and Hunter. A lot of veterans on this Wake Forest defense mixed in with some young players as well. All right, Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. They did give Person the line to gain, so it's a first down from the 40-yard line. Person, again, his third straight carry at a Net of about five, maybe six on first down. Let's talk about what Heritage has uh, endured over the first seven weeks of the season. They started one in 0 oh and six. Scored just one touchdown in their first four games before they played Hillside to a six point loss. But they're a much better team than the one in six record would indicate. Well, and that the schedule is extremely challenging with some of the top teams in the state with East Forsyth and Cleveland, among others, and really trying to get themselves prepared for conference play. And, really to play their best football at the end of the season. Second down at about six. Movement on the defensive line, and now a glance by Perry to the Huskies' sideline. And they will reset play clock down to one, and they're, they just did get it off. They will throw deep down the far sideline, and it's off of the fingertips, incomplete. Looking for Darius Carter up that left side. I wasn't sure they got the play off in time. Our referee Jim Ellis is uh, tying his cleats out in midfield and there is Wallace Clark we talked with him before the game he said sometimes you run into a year like this he felt like his team was prepared to take on the the wood chipping schedule that they saw earlier in the year and things just not yet have broken their way uh, he's a great man and continuing to develop these players on the field as well as off the field and just seeking improvement every week. Coaching for over 30 years. Third down play, another deep ball into some congestion near the goal line, and Cole Perry overshoots his intended receiver. That will bring up fourth down on the plus side of the 50. We'll see what the Huskies do with the offense here. And the punt team on the way up. So the Huskies will kick it away, and there is a look at Herb Pringle, one of the playmakers for Wake Forest. He sets up with his heels right on the 10-yard line. And this is going to be an opportunity here for the Huskies to really change field position. It's going to be critical in a game like this to win on the road. Low snap, handle. And a left-footed boot landed right around the 15-yard line and does take a Huskies bounce inside the 10. And very well done on the punt team for Heritage. So that will see Wake Forest on offense for the first time. And one of the big changes for Wake Forest is they come off the sideline. It is not Joe Anderson, the quarterback. It's junior Owen McNair, number 12. He's attempted only three passes all year, but he gets the start tonight. Well, he's an upperclassman. And coaches have a lot of confidence in McNair. And it's going to be his job tonight to lead this offense, make good decisions, and use his legs as well. And from the eight-yard line is where the drive begins for the Cougars. And a handoff, room outside. This is Micah Olu, strung out and forced out of bounds around the 13-yard line as we take a look at the starting offensive lineup for Wake Forest, brought to you by Papa John's. Well, with McNair, Cook, and Olu in the backfield, those three have to strike for some big plays. Bass Knight, Pringle, and Goodwin 
Very athletic on the outside and rushing Lewis Greer, Davis, and Perry. The O-line will have to protect and also great running lanes. Really move the line of scrimmage. A big part of this ball game is for both offenses. Who can run the ball better? That's a big area to watch. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, that's Amare Cook, number one, in motion to the right. And the handoff, Alou trying to get away from an ankle tackle. Not much there, as a matter of fact, right back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Heritage with Chandler Fleming, number 11, near the bottom of the pile, along with Joseph Lumas. And it's third down deep in the Cougars' own territories. We get a look at the Heritage defense presented by Papa Dell. No, another 3-4 defense, and the defense is going to try to create turnovers tonight with Robert Sanchez and Holloway. Sherwin Fleming, big-time linebacker with Rucker Kirsch, Baden, Allen, Carter, and Cooley on the back end, trying to keep everything in front. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, third down play, and he overshoots Joshua Bass Knight, the top receiver on this Cougar team. And that is exactly what the Huskies were hoping to dial up here, three and out. And the Huskies should get very good field position on their second crack. You know, in a rivalry game, both teams, it's going to come down to little things, execution on third down, which defenses can play well. And Patrick, so far, each defense really doing a nice job on their first drives out there, getting off the field. Now Heritage will try to take advantage of potential good field position. And here's a really talented kicker, Evan Helfrich, number 19. Boots went away, does turn over, and it's fielded right at midfield. An immediate tackle, a flattening tackle by Wake Forest. Jaden Debnam, number four, just as that was brought in. Fortunately for the Huskies, the ball was not knocked loose out of the hands of Heritage's Grant Day. And Heritage back on offense for the second time. Early first quarter, we're scoreless. Stay tuned for the medical game plan brought to you by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Heritage Wake Forest will punt it on their first possession. And yes, as you mentioned, Jay, this is a game of, uh, there's a lot of history oh, yeah. between all these players, the families in this uh, Relatively new rivalry between Heritage and Wake Forest. Heritage on offense for the second time in the game. Cole Perry, the quarterback, they flood the bottom of the screen. A, a diamond set, four receivers on the near sideline. And they're looking to go the other way, but the blitz comes in and Wake sniffs it out. Marquez Wilbur, number 33, very talented linebacker, read it and was almost unabated to the quarterback. Reggie Lucas has another strong defense, and the defensive line wins up front. Great job getting in the backfield. It was a four-by-one set, trying to create confusion, but the D-line didn't allow it getting into the lap of Perry. Yeah, lost of about six. And there's a look at the coaching staff for Wake Forest. Reggie Lucas, head coach for the Cougars since 2009, won three straight state titles, 2016, 2017, 2018. And a second down carry person for a couple of yards. But this is one of the more uh, prolific high school programs at the big state level, really over the, about the last 20 years. They took a step back, especially defensively last year. And they come in three and four, but two and oh in the league. And that's the first of three real big goals for the Cougars win the conference play, get to the postseason, and then vie for a state title. Yeah, it's such rich history. And you see the banners here in the press box. There's yeah. plaques and pictures of their state championship years. And I'll tell you what, one of the most impressive things, and we get to see all the schools and Heritage and Wake Forest, is just the care and compassion of both coaching staffs. And you know, how great are the leaders that they are for these for these kids. And they do it right on the football field, but also off the field as well. Yeah, there'll be a timeout on the field. As the play clock was uh, winding down, we will take a timeout. Huskies will recompose on the sideline facing a third and long, midway through the opening quarter from Wake Forest. Heritage and Wake Forest scores. And back in Wake Forest on a cool Friday night, 56 degrees, beautiful conditions though as Heritage takes on Wake Forest. They beat the Cougars for the first time in school history last year, 23-21. Expected to be a tight one here. Third down and 13 for the Huskies. A backpedaling dump off, and this is Grant Day breaking through, and Day close to a first down. And he may actually have it. A little 
screen to the running back, Grant Day, and he kind of got lost in the middle of the field. Uh, this was a great play call by the offensive coordinator, Bradley Fournier, going with the screen. Obvious passing down, but they go with the quick screen to keep the defense on their heels going underneath today, having confidence that he can pick it up. That's a really good job by Fournier. He's kind of picking his spots, throwing the screen. It is an air experts first down. Now person to the left side, scrapes off of a would-be tackler right around the line of scrimmage, and person picks up about four. Person, he can run it physically in between the tackles. His speed, though, on the outside, that's the difference that he really brings to that position. And what makes him such a great player is he can turn on the Jets and really make it difficult to chase after him once he breaks the angle. He's nearly 500 yards through the first seven games for Heritage, the top running back on this team. And on second and seven, and the back swallowed up. That's Person again after a pickup of nearly three. Jalil Perry, number 58, and on the tackle for Wake Forest, along with Amari Cook. We'll see him on both sides of the football. The Perry gets off the block, and he is so physical on the defensive line, just swallows it up for the big play. Another third down opportunity coming up. And Wake Forest defense got a lead with that D line, the three, four defense. They can bring different pressures. Ivan Brazo, the defensive coordinator, likes to mix things up, especially on third down. Yeah, front seven really expected to be the strength of this defense for Wake Forest. Third and about four. They pass out to the sideline. The reception is made in first down territory. And the catch brought in by Taden Winstead, number nine for the Huskies. And that's good enough to move the chains again for Heritage. A couple of big third down conversions. And Winstead, a trusted wide receiver, a big third downs. Look towards Winstead here, runs a clean route, comes back to the ball, knows exactly where the first down marker is. Good job moving the chains. Pickup of nine. And another first down brought to you by Air Experts. Heating, cooling, and plumbing. Schedule your tune-up today at airexperts.com. Person through the middle and rides Dylan Balkis forward for a couple of yards. Person has been the featured back so far for the Huskies. He's been productive on first down. Picks up a couple. And for Heritage's offensive line, there's four seniors up front. That's one of the strengths of their offense is the big guys up front led by Davis, Evans, Dennison, Asidi, and Tarver. And those guys played a lot of football together, and they really rely on them in the running game. And Perry, about five yards behind scrimmage, pistol formation on second down. Fake to person. Perry off his back foot, tosses toward the end zone. It's in the air. It is broken up, incomplete. Knocked down in the end zone. That's Herb Pringle, number five. Really had inside position on the flight of that football. Perfect execution from Pringle. Stride for stride as he goes back in coverage. And Heritage is going for it all. Rolling out Perry. And Pringle turns his head around. Great job just flipping his hips. Coming back, looking for Perry and knocking it down. So now another third and long for Heritage. But they've converted twice on this drive. Third and 13, third and nine. This is a third and eight. Empty backfield for Perry. Five receivers across the formation. Quarterback draw, and Perry on his feet. Zigzags for it. First down yardage and more close to the 10. To spread out the formation and found a lot of room up the middle. First down for the Huskies just outside the 10. Uh, Perry very good with his legs. Designed run, and he reads the defense. Just gets to the outside. And then cuts back in, continues to move the chains on this drive, and a good job. Back-to-back -back third downs, picking it up. Bradley Fournier going with the screen earlier on the drive. There, the quarterback draw to pick it up. And inside the UNC Blue Zone for the first time in the game. UNC GoHeels.com. First down, carry maybe back to the line of scrimmage for Person. Well, these third down conversions offensively for Heritage can really damage you psychologically on the defensive side of the football. And again, that was expected to be the strength for the Wake Forest Cougars coming into this year. And again, the Cougars started the campaign a very atypical one and four strong non-conference schedule though as well. A couple of wins in a row coming into tonight, both conference wins. One and two unbeatens. Second out, flushed out is Perry. Roams to the short side and angles out of bounds. A little nudge by Landon Misnick, number 13. And here we go again, Jay, third and long 
for Heritage. And good job just forcing Peary to the outside, then closing it down, getting him out of bounds and for Wake Forest defense. All right, you got to make sure the linebackers especially read the eyes, read your keys, because we've seen how Perry can break things down on third down. They don't necessarily have to go all the way to the end zone here. They could throw something underneath in potential yep. four-down territory. Let's see what they do here on third down. Carella, Pantaleone to the right of Perry on third and ten. They can pick up a first down without scoring here. Four receivers. Perry throws to the back pylon and little miscommunication looking for Grant Day again. And it's fourth down and now the first real decision for the Huskies in scoring range. It looks like they're going to kick it and Wake Forest, Ivan Brazo, the DC brings pressure. Jaden Debden, number four, getting into the backfield quickly off the edge. The defense does their job to get off the field. And it will be a field goal try here for the Heritage Huskies. And this will be from around 30 yards. Inside three minutes to go in the opening quarter. It's a clean snap. The hold is good. And the kick is low, but it is good. Over the crossbar and the Heritage Huskies strike first. 30-yard field goal. Huskies take a 3-0 lead at the 2.53 mark of the first quarter. Early on, Heritage has had field position, and they take advantage of it on the drive. There's the fans. Close drive from Heritage. High again, close proximity for both programs as Wake Forest defense forced the fourth down to get off the field. Early on here, Heritage, three nothing lead. Yeah, that is a confidence boosting drive for Heritage. Those three third down conversions set them up, but Wake Forest kind of uh, splitting the hairs as they buck up and force a field goal try. And Trail by three. There is a look at Wallace Clark, head coach for the Huskies. We chat with him before the game. He's a, a grandfather of five. Three of them went to Heritage High School. One of them is a current freshman at Wake Forest. Chloe, she's on the other side of the field in the bleachers. He said, I'm not a big fan of hers tonight. She's not a big fan of mine. They'll reacquaint each other tomorrow. <laughs> a 3 nothing lead for the Huskies. Let's go down more on Wallace Clark. Here's Madison. Yeah, Patrick, he's not originally from the Wake Forest area, although he is very passionate about the community, as you just touched on. He grew up in New Orleans, moved here in 1992, and in my conversation with him, you could feel the appreciation he has for this place. He's been part of Heritage's staff since day one, officially took over as head coach in 2018, a job he said he was called to do after decades of coaching. He said despite his team's win-loss record, this team is successful. He feels like he was chosen to be here and to guide these young men through life, so he isn't measuring success with wins but by the impact he has on this team and Jay despite what he says about record this team as you know moving in the right direction and coach's dedication to this team a huge part of that yeah and with coach Clark he cares about these kids and the right direction in life the getting them on that pathway for success and you see it there keep pointing them in the right direction that's his mission he's called to do this job and he's done an amazing job with these players. You can tell how proud he is of the former players that he's coached and what they've become as far as men in the community and you know, instilling those values, values in this year's current team. And just a great guy and love catching up with him every time we see him. Yeah, and he told us before the game he did not have to do anything to motivate his players this week because, again, uh, the histories are very long with these uh, young teenagers, older teenagers. They've been playing against one another for a long time, and even classmates at some middle schools here in the air as we get our first penalty of the game. It's a personal foul going against Heritage. So despite the team being 1-6 and six after the win last week over Nightdale, 27-21, yeah, this is their biggest game of the schedule in the regular season. Face mask penalty there against the Huskies for 15. Wake Forest does such a good job in their running game with misdirection, using multiple backs to stay fresh. And there they pick up the penalty, start the drive. Two and a half minutes to go in this first quarter. Three nothing to Heritage. And McNair will throw pressure from the back side. He got hit as he released it, but it still gets to his man short of the 40 yard line. And again for McNair, he had thrown three passes all year before tonight. And this is just a, 
An innate sense for a quarterback to feel that something's coming from the backside and just got that football away. Uh, Zane Kirsch coming through on the blitz, number 30, with the big hit, McNair. Boy, the toughness that he showed, knowing you're going to get a hit, keeping your eyes downfield, throwing a strike. Very impressive from McNair. Well, he needed Carter Merritt to really kind of chip off that uh, backside blitzer. Reception for a couple of yards, second down and about seven. And now on the jet sweep, they bring it to Olu, and Olu toward the sideline, and out of bounds will be a couple of yards short. Lyndon Dillard, the offensive coordinator with the different backs with Olu, Cook. They'll use them as the ball carry and also as a blocker. Now is Cook leading the way out on the edge, setting up a big third down. It's so important to pick up a couple yards first down, a couple yards second down to make it manageable on third downs. Yeah, really so far for Wake Forest, first down only on the penalty. They went three and out in their first possession. Third down and a short four here for the Cougars. A little pressure, deflected pass, and it's incomplete to the near sideline. And that will set up another fourth down for Wake Forest. Well, any time that we've seen McNair go back to throw, the pressure has been coming from in between the tackles and from both the blind side and the front side on him. Heritage is showing different looks. Again, with their 3-4, if you can't get to the quarterback, get your arms up. Excellent job knocking down. And there's Chandler Fleming who got his hand on that attempted pass. End over end kick, and it takes a Wake Forest bounce inside the 20-yard line. Down at the 17. 34-yard kick and the best field position of the night for the Wake Forest Cougar defense as they trail 3-0 with 140 left here in this opening quarter. And the defense is really stout so far. And for Wake Forest, you flip the field position to force Heritage to go the length of the field. So far for Heritage, they have not asked Cole Perry to do a heck of a lot. He's taken a couple of shots down the field, but he's been kind of leaning heavily on Ladanian Person, who is the lone setback in this formation for the Huskies. On first down. He'll be a keeper here by Perry. Races to his left and cannot get away. In the backfield quickly, Marquez Wilbur one more time. He's been a central player defensively for Wake in this first quarter. Wilbur just flies in the backfield as Perry gets the snap. There he is, just unblocked, staying at home, very disciplined, not biting on the fake, and making the big play for the tackle for loss. Loss of four. And this is a spot where Heritage has not really found itself a whole lot in this opening quarter, behind the chains on second down. Now we'll see how they attack it as they are back at their own 13-yard line. Perry buying some time. He's under pressure, in trouble now, and he's going to go down again. Slam down to the seven-yard line. That'll be a sack for the Wake Forest defense. Jalil Perry, number 58, got there as the entire defensive line is kind of closed in on Cole Perry. And just the hustle and everybody winning up front, it makes it so difficult when you have nowhere to run. That pressure is coming up the middle, and that's one of the strikes. The Wake Forest defense is that interior defensive line pressure, and Jalil Perry's a big part of it. And now we'll see what kind of flag is raised here by Heritage's offense on third down and about 17 from inside their own 10 yard line. They give it off. This is Person looking for a room, nothing there to his left, and he might have lost a couple of more yards. And one more time, it's Wilbur. They cannot defend Marquez Wilbur right now, the offensive line for Heritage. Fourth down as the first quarter winds down. So momentum now for the Cougars for the first time, and they should get excellent field position out of this Heritage forthcoming punt. Done with one, Huskies lead Wake Forest 3 zip. Well, it was a heartbreaking week over the course of the last couple of days here at Wake Forest High School. Their legendary Head coach Larry Lindsay, the head basketball coach and athletic director at Wake Forest Rollsville for over 20 years, won st six state championships, passed away yesterday, and they held a moment of silence before the game tonight, and uh, all of our hearts are broken with the passing of uh, Larry Lindsay, and you'll see a number of the coaches on the sideline for Wake Forest and are wearing white ribbons in his honor. 
There's a picture of Coach Lindsey and Reggie Lucas and dear close friends and just an amazing person and his impact pregame just talking with the Wake Forest community and Coach Lucas and just a great person, a great coach, meant so much to so many people and has really grown up with this community with his longtime affiliation with the school and um, just everybody loved him and, and a very, very tough couple days here with uh, Coach Lindsey and, and um, you know, his passing. Six state titles, won over 600 games with more on the legend Larry Lindsey. Let's go downstairs to Madison. Well, you guys said it. He was a dear friend to Reggie Lucas, but he was also a mentor. Coach Lindsay actually coached Reggie, Reggie Lucas here at Wake Forest when he played basketball and then was a big part of why Coach Lucas got into coaching following his collegiate career. He told me the two talked every Wednesday for the last two years and just formed a super special relationship. Coach Lindsay going to be missed by this community and especially Reggie Lucas. Big play on first down for Wake Forest after the the putt was forced from back inside the 10 yard line. You figure that the Cougars going to get good field position and now they take advantage here as Joe Anderson is now in as the quarterback for Wake Forest and a nice little shifty move by Herbert Pringle tacking on another 15 yards after the catch. A big play and Brendan Diller, the offensive coordinator going through the air and just back to Coach Lindsey, Patrick, six state championships, 20 conference titles. Yeah. I mean, that's just amazing dominance, but what he did off the field and his friendships, relationships is, you know, such a huge part of it. Just somebody that everyone's going to miss and everyone's going to carry on those values. Yeah, so hearts are very heavy for the coaching staff, for the students, the teachers, the administration, these players on the field. And there is Joe Anderson. Did not get the start tonight for the Cougars, but after a couple of uh, uneventful drives for Wake Forest. They go to the senior who's thrown for almost 700 yards this year. Five touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's making an impact already. Second down inside the red zone. And Anderson tosses over the middle in and out of the hands of Pringle. On a hard slant, third down. And Chandler Fleming in coverage. The star linebacker college prospect for Heritage was there ready to make the big play. As Wake Forest went through the air, we'll see here on third down. Is this four down territory? It depends what you pick up here. Mm -hmm. This could be a running play. Heritage defense will have to keep their eyes on the run, not necessarily a pass. They need the five yard line to keep the drive going with a fresh set of downs. Third down, Anderson looks to the right. Contact as the pass was coming through. No flag though. Looks like there might have been a little bit of early contact by Seth Rucker, number 32 on coverage. The flag stayed in the back pocket, and it's fourth down. And here comes the field goal unit. Evan Helfrich on the field for Wake Forest to attempt a game-tying field goal. So the spot will come from the 19. This will officially be a 29-yard try to try and tie things up. Off the left hash. Clean snap, plenty of distance, and we are tied. So a 29 yard field goal by Halfridge knots things up with 10.50 to go in the first half. A good response from the Cougars, driving the ball down the field, executing to tie the ball game up. A special teams unit coming through, and just like the explosive plays on that drive. In a rivalry game, you know, we talked in the open, Patrick, about in these ball games, it comes down to turnovers, penalties, the small things, maybe play here, play there. And right now you can see it, an even ball game and really believe this game is going to go all the way to the end. 3-3 three, three tie. Let's check out the Leith Accurate game summary for the opening quarter. Leith Accurate in Raleigh. Jay, pretty even and uh, turnover free so far. Yeah, both sides, you look at the yards, and a lot of that's because of the field position. So the, the special teams unit has opened things up, short fields, and each side just really waiting for the big play. Disciplined ball game, though, with only one penalty each side, zero turnovers. Game playing out about the way you expected? I did. I, I think this game is going to be very evenly matched and go right down to the wire. And, you know, you can see early on, both sides have confidence in their passing game, really relying, though, on their running game and trusting their offensive line. All right, so ready for the kickoff. Brought to you by NC Safe. If you own a gun, lock it up together. Let's keep North Carolina safe. Returnable kick from around the two-yard line. 
Carella Pantaleon finds a little bit of room, nuzzling up that sideline past the 30 to about the 33 yard line. This return right up the middle, then boom, the cut to the outside. Good job just getting outside of the edge. A couple nice blocks by the up men to create a path. As the drive begins now for a heritage, Cole Perry. Quarterback who has kind of leaned on person. Taking a couple of shots down the field. Grant Day has been really the targeted guy so far. And their top receiver is also their top back person. 20 catches coming into the game tonight. So first down Huskies. And now on the reverse, they get it in the hands of Carter. Steps up the middle and undercut around the 45-yard line. We saw a bit of a reverse on the game's opening kickoff and now a much more traditional reverse here offensively. Now the misdirection, go towards the right, bring it back to the left with Carter, good speed. There's with that big frame finishing off the run with a stiff arm to pick up a first down. Down brought to you by Air Experts Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Schedule your tune up today at airexperts.com. Out to the 46 yard line on that reverse to Carter. Pickup of a couple on first down. Well, the first couple of drives, we did see the running game, especially on third down, take its toll in the Wake Forest defense, but a very good defensive stand for. Wake Forest in the uh, last possession. Carella Pantaleon heads the sideline after picking up maybe a yard and a half. Well, we really saw the defensive line, the pressure stand out, Patrick. Those guys up front getting into the backfield, getting the penetration with low pad level. Yeah, they certainly have to mark Marquez Wilbur, number 33, is on the right side of that defensive line. On the ground, Person snaking forward, still on his feet and dragging a couple of defenders out close to the 40. It's a hard run of almost 13 for Person. First down signal and Person. We talked about him being physical in those tough yards. There's one hand, a couple guys coming over, putting a shoulder on him. He does not go down. Gets about five extra yards after initial contact. And Wake Forest will take a timeout as Heritage beginning to drive again. Early state is second quarter, 3-3 three, three top. Reminder, stay tuned for the U.S. Army Halftime Report, where Jay and I will have this week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes, interviews, highlights, and a whole lot more. United States Army, be all you can be. 3-3 three, three tie from Wake Forest. Patrick Hughes, Jay Sonhalter, Madison Little down on the field on a cool Friday night in mid-October. And the Heritage Huskies, just one win this year, trying to take down their top rival in their conference for the second year in a row as we get a keeper there by Cole Perry. And so far, you know, to win on the road, third down conversion, play very good defense, and don't make any mistakes. And so far, basically, they're checking all those boxes. Yeah, protecting the football and making it difficult on a defense. When you get outside and use your legs and just not stand in the pocket, it is so hard as a defender, a linebacker especially, where you're reading where the ball is, and then you have to Got to zero in on the quarterback, then chase after him. And Barry's very talented when he's got the ability to scramble. Well, last time we saw this formation, they called a keeper here. They will throw with a five receiver formation and catch by a person out of the backfield, but he cannot get away up that far sideline. Jaden Debnam, number four, a nice one on one tackle there to limit the damage, but it's enough for a first down for Harrison. The person, the running back, is lined up in the slot. He is so versatile talented and can do it all run the ball catch it pass block you can move him in different spots in the formation and, and he's the guy that's been so good throughout his career at heritage 21st catch of the year for person that's an air expert heating cooling and plumbing first down inside the 30 yard line four receivers again stacked to the left and Perry will throw again. Nothing to the right. Little room to roam. Tosses and finds Person all alone underneath near the 10-yard line. 
Initially, some pretty good coverage downfield by the defensive second area. Then it broke down, and Person has settled into an area, and Perry hit him. And that's what you do when your quarterback scrambling. You just want to find his eyes and then find the open spot in the zone defense. He just sits, locks eyes with Perry as he found him, and continues to move the ball. So now first and goal for the Huskies as they march toward their second lead of the game. Person in the backfield left to Perry. Emphatic clap gives to Person full head of steam and he got drilled like a wall right around the six yard line. And he was running downhill immediately and then he got creamed by Wilberts. Picks up about four. There's pressure coming up the middle trying to slow down the run. There's a couple guys also in there as yeah. well. Mari Cook, who we highlighted as well early on, playing running back and safety, coming up with the big hit. Second and goal. They swing it out quickly. A person cuts it back upfield to the five toward the goal line and in. Touchdown, Heritage. Ladanian person took the swing pass out of the backfield, accelerated forward, and gives the Huskies a 9-3 lead. The blocking out front was exceptional as Person gets the ball. The O-line, look at that, just clearing out a path, making it easy on Person. Once he got it, he just made one quick cutback and easily gets in the end zone. An original Grills touchdown for Heritage. A five-yard touchdown pass brought in by Person. Original Grills, elevate your game. So a Heritage, which had not beaten Wake Forest in school history. School opened in 2010. They beat Wake for the first time in school history last year. They're on the road trying to do it again. And a 10-3 lead for Heritage midway through the second quarter. Stay tuned for the medical game plan brought to you by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. 10-3 lead for the Huskies over Wake Forest. Ladanian Person, the first couple of drives featured out of the backfield on the ground. And on that last drive, Jay caught three passes, including the five-yard touchdown reception to give the Huskies the lead for the second time. Yeah, and they really use him in different spots, making it difficult on defense. And you just see his talent really stand out, the ability to catch the ball, make guys miss, and do a nice job just extending drives, picking up third down conversions. Dangerous trio back to return the kick. Heritage with Ryland Birch ready to boot it away, but you have Amari Cook back there, Josh Norris, and Micah Olu. So a key here for the Huskies special teams to handle the kickoff return. Kickoff brought to you by NC Safe. If you own a gun, lock it up. Together, let's keep North Carolina safe. Cavalry of blockers ahead, bumping off, staying on his feet, and there goes Alou to the 30, to the 35, and fighting for more yardage. Well, they set the return to go middle left. It got congested, and Alou showed some speed, some vision, and some strength. And the instincts, because this is drawn right up the middle. He just takes it to the outside, just goes with his instincts getting out beating the defense and getting tough yards after contact. Look at the stiff arms. Multiple guys trying to bring him down, still stays up. And there is a Louie, he's not taking a moment off. He'll be split to the left slots. Joe Anderson back for his second drive of the game. Norris goes in motion for the Cougars, trailing 10-3. And the handoff, this is Amare Cook. Can't go far to the outside, try to cut it back up the numbers. and. Stacked up after a pickup of maybe two. Cook playing both ways. One of the key players. Only a junior, 6'2", 175. So we'll see him getting carries, him and Olu, and then on the back end on the defensive side, he's an enforcer in the secondary. The guy that's really been coming on strong as the season's progressed, getting more and more touches and really stepping up his game. Anderson on second down, play fake, throws deep up the left side in attempt and nearly brought in by Herbert Pringle. 
but broken up nicely. 1v1 coverage up that left side, and Heritage getting it done in all phases so far. This is a strong throw. Fake handoff play action. Anderson goes over the top and just good work dislodging the ball. Sean Allen knocking it loose. This is one of those games you come in, you see the records in a Wake Forest, you figure would be the favorite in this game with their history and their talent pool. Heritage of one and six. First, what, five games, you know, six games a year, they scored three total touchdowns. That pass a little bit high and a little bit behind the intended receiver up that right side looking for Josh Norris. But, you know, don't sleep on Heritage. I mean, you know that they played such a very, very tough schedule. Wallace Clark told us before the game that he certainly has not lost his team. They're still engaged, practicing hard. Big week as they take on the rival here tonight. So the Wake Forest certainly wasn't taking Heritage lightly, especially with what happened last year. Fair catch signaled for and made. And the next Heritage drive will begin right around the 24-yard line. And there's a look at Wallace Clark. Stops at Orange. Stops at Broughton before he came here to Heritage. Again, last year they went four and seven, knocked out in the first round of the playoffs by Millbrook. They got doused by Millbrook a couple of weeks ago, 45 to nothing in their conference opener, but then rebounded with a win over Nightdale last week. So Cole Perry brings the offense for Heritage back in the field, 535 left first half. 10-3 lead for the Huskies. Chance to build on that here as we tick down toward halftime. And we get a whistle. Play clock still had eight remaining on it. We got a false start going on here. Just the second penalty of the game. Huskies in their season opener shut out by East Forsyth, 44 nothing. Lost to Jordan, 44 zip. Leesville Road, a 31 nothing win, and then Millbrook, 45 zip. So, of the six losses suffered by Heritage, four shutouts. But here they are on the road at typically one of the annual powers in the state, and they're leading 10 to three. Pressure coming, felt by Perry, tries to avoid it, and does forge a few steps forward to avoid a bigger loss. Pressure coming from Misnick, number 13, and it's third down and long. Well, I think. Check that second down and long. As we see here, pressure off the edge. A good job of Lake Force just collapsing down to make the play. When you look at both teams, Lake Force very challenging non conference schedule as well, and each side dealing with a lot of injuries. And just both teams having to go to depth, and you know, these are proud programs. and. And they just continue to get better, but it's been one of those years where a lot of injuries have occurred and they just had to kind of find a way in each game. Perry flushed out again. This one's tipped near the line of scrimmage, high in the air, and lands dangerously incomplete. Perry buying some time to his right, but then the defensive line for the uh, Cougars got hands up. I don't know if that was Wilbert again who tipped this pass. I believe it is. Yeah, 33. And then it went about 20 feet into the air and then landed, fortunately for the Huskies, incomplete. For Wake Forest, two wins in a row. And this defense, you can see that I mean, they are physical, but they are one of those units that just plays hard all the way through the whistle. They don't give up. Third and 14, pump fake, reverse pivot. Perry throws on the run, and then is knocked out of bounds. Some contact and kind of hand fighting on that sideline. Nico Hunter on the coverage. You see Carter looking for a flag that does not fly in, and it's fourth down. That's an important stop for the Wake defense. It's huge, not only to get off the field, but they should get pretty good field position as Perry's rolling out. You can just see, he can scramble and throws going against his right side. And Heritage and nowhere to go. Reggie Lucas very pleased with his defense's pressure and getting off the field. Birch to kick it away. Herb Pringle is back. Little pressure. This punt goes straight up. And this will land in the 34, but take a very fortuitous bounce of almost 15 more yards for Heritage. That takes it out to right around midfield. That is a fortunate bounce for Heritage. 
Meanwhile, Wakes, Marquez Wilbur hobbling a little bit toward the sideline for the Cougars. He's been their best defensive player here in the first half. Stayed on that right leg. So excellent field position. First time Wake will begin in plus territory here. 4.33 remaining in this opening half. A couple of timeouts remaining for Wake Forest, down by seven. Anderson loading up, throws underneath, and it's incomplete. Hine through the hands of Pringle. Tight coverage on that sideline by Joshua Maudman, number two for Heritage. Both secondaries have been really good in coverage. They haven't allowed the big play over the top. And physical on the outside, too. The refs are letting these guys play. One thing I love about these games at Wake Forest, the digital down markers across the field. <laughs> this is the only they field that, awesome. yeah, the only field that I remember being at where that's the case. Cook looking for Saroom, put his hand in the back of one of his linemen, trying to shadow him forward, only picks up a couple yards, and it is third down. There is a look right there. We need that young lady to twist that orange just a little bit, but yeah, those are we appreciate those are not standard. Yeah. And they are glowing on your screen right there. But, third down and eight. And this is a great setup here with this stadium press box and Trentini Stadium. Yeah, this press box is what, four levels? Yeah. And we have our own level, entire level to ourselves here. Third down, deep ball looking for Pringle, and it's over. Shooting him by a couple of yards. Fourth down for Wake Forest. And you're right, though. You just said that the secondaries on both teams have really stood tall, made big plays. That's that's yeah. been the case. Not a lot of zone coverage in the back four. A lot of a lot of man to man coverage there. There you see the lighted the lighted level floor of the press box. That's us. We're the only ones in here. Wake Forest punts it away, and this will be scooped up, and the ball comes loose, and Wake Forest is going to pick it up. Recovered by Wake Forest, and what in the world was Heritage thinking? Ethan Nichols is on the fumble recovery. It looked like Heritage was simply going to let this one go, and the ball be down, but Grant Day, number 22, I don't know what he was thinking. That is not the right play, and pays a fatal price. That was McNair that knocked the ball loose. Stripped it out, Nichols, the junior, picks it up. And what a job, though, by that coverage unit to, to hustle, be aware, and be ready for a drop ball. And now it looks like Pringle is down, dealing with cramps in that left leg. So that will slow down the start of just a donated offensive drive here for Wake Forest. Just as we had praised Heritage for playing virtually a clean first half on the road, seven-point lead, about to get the ball back. Can probably just take it a halftime with that lead. And Boy, how things have changed. Big plot twist here in Wake Forest. And you want to limit those mistakes and you have that one turnover. You can see how quickly that can change momentum if Wake Forest can punch this in. And the coverage unit hustling down. There's McNair, number 12, knocks it loose. Nichols jumps on it. Three Cougars ready. Very nice work by that unit. Again, hustling down. Just looked like a simple play, but all three guys running down full speed. And you, I mean, if you're the coaching staff, you're asking. Grant Day, what, what, what are you seeing? What do you think can happen on that play? It's not as though he could pick it up and had three or four yards of open territory. I mean, there's the weight player right there to his left as he tried to fingertip up that football, and that is a unneeded turnover for Wallace Clark's Heritage Huskies here. Because you've given an extremely short field to Joe Anderson and Wake Forest. Now you give the Cougars really their first bit of momentum all game long. They get the football on the other side of halftime. See how the next 3.34 goes. A little jet sweep, the toss. And up the sideline and pushed out of bounds. That's Mike Alou. He's inside the five. Pickup of 11. That should be first and goal for Wake Forest. Lyndon Dillard, the offensive coordinator, using both backs as Alou just stays patient. Good block on the outside by Josh Norris. Clearing a path and Wake Forest did a good job running downhill. Tamari so Cook in the backfield, left of Anderson. And they toss it again. Alou, Alou inside the five, hemmed in. Pile being pushed forward, but 
We'll give him four progress for a couple of yards down to about the three. For Wake Forest, of course you want the touchdown, but also it doesn't hurt if this clock continues to run a little bit and limit the time for Heritage when they get the ball back. So break of the huddle, Anderson on second and goal. Ball at the three-yard line. Wake Forest knocking on the door to tie the game. Trailing 10-3. Anderson there's the give. A loose side steps one man. Sprints toward the corner and scores. Touchdown, Wake Forest. Micah Alu from three yards out. And the Cougars after the putt that was fumbled away on the fingertips. Capitalize and cash in their extra point away from the top. Yeah, the offensive line, Noah Christensen, Gavin Greer. Those two just clearing the path. Nice pancake block then on the outside. The wide receivers doing their job. Olu slick, the little hop to the outside. And easily gets in the end zone to tie the ball game up. The original Grills touchdown scored by Micah Alu. A two yard run. Original Grills elevate your grill game. That's what the good teams do. Down by seven. They capitalize on the turnover on a putt. They had no business being on offense. And a couple of plays later, a little high steps into the end zone. And we're tied with 2.42 to go in this opening half. I like the response from Olu and this unit. They did. They got forced into a punting situation, come off the field, and then gifted great field position. And they take advantage of it. Stay tuned, the U.S. Army Halftime Report on the way. This week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes will have interviews, highlights, and more. The United States Army, be all you can be. Major Lucas has to be feeling a whole lot better than he was about three minutes ago. 10-10. Now he will rely on what has been a very stiff defense most of the nights. Malou with his first that is a sixth touchdown carry of the year. Now the NC safe kickoff. If you own a gun, lock it up. Together, let's keep North Carolina safe. This bouncing kick taken by one of the up man and across the 22-yard uh, line. There goes Grant Day. He's the man who just tried to pick up that punt a moment ago. Back out there on special teams. There is a marker down around the 35-yard line. Heritage will have 233, and depending on the outcome of this flag, either very good field position or very poor field position. We'll see against whom the call is made. And the field position will be poor. Marked off against Heritage. So the drive begins at the 25-yard line for Heritage, 2.33 to go. A couple of timeouts for the Huskies. And Cole Perry will deploy Person in motion out of the backfield to his right. Look his way, nothing. Throws to the near sideline. That's Carter up the sideline, lost a man. And Takes it out close to the 40-yard line. Now, this was a really good play from Perry. He was looking for person coming out of the backfield in motion. The coverage was good, so then he comes back to the other side to find Carter, and I liked how he moved his eyes, read it all the way yep. through, and hit Carter for a big play. That'll be a gain of about 12. They mark him out at the 37-yard line, so still enough for a first down for a heritage. There's an injured... Wake Forest player right on their sideline, so both teams will be called to their respective sidelines with 2.23 to go. Might be Amari Cook of Wake Forest as they feel down around that right knee, right ankle area. That would be potentially a very critical loss on both sides of the football for the Cougars. He is such an important piece. Offense and defense, leadership. Tough to see him down. Looks like they'll be able to get him up. As you can see, he's in pain. He's shaking his head to his athletic training staff. He's going to need some assistance. This is 
hopefully just precautionary, not putting any weight on that leg as they take him over toward the athletic training tents. Further examine Amari Cook. Well, now it's all about response for Heritage. Defense gave up a touchdown on a very short field after Grant Day tried to pick up a punt that was basically rolling to a stop, led to a turnover. The first moments of adversity for Heritage tonight 10 10 tie. First down for the Huskies. Four receivers right, one at the bottom of the screen. Four-man rush, chasing, turned right back into pressure, and down he goes. Back inside the 30-yard line, it'll be a loss of about nine. Jalil Perry, boy, we've said his name a lot, Wilbert's name a lot on the defensive front for the Wake Forest Cougars. And Perry's playing both ways, offensive line as well, and he has a great motor as he just continues to come on with his rush. Perry Wilbur, those two meeting at the quarterback. You see that unit with three guys on that front defensive line, four linebackers, really been relentless tonight, chasing after the quarterback. Timeout taken by Heritage after a loss of almost 10. I know they don't give half sacks on a play like that to a a guy like the play made by Marquez Wilbur, but the fact that Wilbur got the pressure, kind of contained Perry, yeah. spun him the other way, kind of spun him out of range to make the sack on his own, but right into the arms of his teammate. So we'll give we'll give him an assist. And for Coach Lucas, if he, his unit can get off the field here with the timeouts, still second down here, but if you can get some stops, you can get the ball back to your offense potentially. Now we'll see what kind of play calls Heritage dials up for Perry. Second down and 20. And you're right, when you start throwing here, throwing incomplete pass, effectively would work as another timeout for Wake Forest. They may get the football back in pretty good field position. When it looked like Heritage is going to take a lead, almost guaranteed into halftime. They swing it out to the right side, spinning through, and a very nice pickup on second and long. And that is Darius Carter kind of ripping his way through a uh, sliver of a hole on that right side. He'll pick up about 14 or 15 yards. Brings up third and short. A good play call. Just try to get something to the side. Quick, easy pass. Let Carter do the rest with his legs now to set up a third down where it's much easier to pick up when it's only third and five. And watch for person split out inside the slot. Perry, empty backfield on third and long five. He's looking left, looks over the middle, nothing, nothing. Now he'll need to improvise. He's going to run it, cuts back, has the first down, and slides toward the sideline. Excellent patience as the clock was ticking down internally for Cole Perry. And from a second and 20 to a first down for Heritage. And Perry was looking for person. He was reading the defense. You can see the hand up. And he saw him, but he didn't want to put the ball in harm's way. Wise decision to play it safe, scramble to the outside, then just take off to pick up the first down. So first down out of the 47-yard line brought to you by Air Experts Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Schedule your tune-up today at airexperts.com. And whistles blown. Play clock had seven seconds on it. And we're looking at our referee, Jim Ellis. Still waiting to see what the call is. Jim Ellis has been officiating 37 years. Done one state championship game back in 2004. It's been so long, he couldn't even remember who played. First down carry for a couple of yards. Clock stops, 46 seconds left. Second down for the Huskies at the 45 yard line. So Heritage will take a timeout. And they're in position, at least right now, Jay, to worst case, take a tie into intermission. Best case, touchdown in between. You're talking, I mean, if you're 
Shooting the seven cents split down the middle. Maybe a long field goal shot yeah. to take a lead. Well, and you have that one timeout, which is huge. I think what Heritage will try to do is spread things out and, of course, go through the air. Veteran offensive line, you hope that they can protect Perry, but also if that pressure comes, which we have seen it tonight, you have confidence that Perry can get outside, either extend the play or scramble and get a big run. With that timeout, you don't have to necessarily go to the sidelines. You can keep the ball in the middle of the field in between the hashes, even run it and use it wisely. A full offensive unit went to the sideline for Heritage. So this will be a second down and eight. 46 seconds left in the half. One timeout for the Huskies as well. They split Grant Day all the way to the bottom of your screen on second down. Now they shift the formation. And now it's Perry looking left. He will run that way. Throws across the body over the middle. Finds his man person, but he's short of the first down. He brings up third and about four, maybe five. The clock's still rolling with 30 seconds to go. And Heritage will not burn the timeout. Good job by Wake Forest keeping the ball in front. And they will snap it with 23 seconds. Perry deep over the middle, and he threw it behind the antenna man looking for person again. Fourth down now, Jay. You still need about five to get the first down. You're well out of field goal range. And we'll see what the decision is for Heritage. And, you know, here, all right, if you go for it, you don't pick it up, it's probably going to be around 10 seconds left if you don't pick it up. And if you punt it here, then basically you're just going you know, to try to flip the field going to the halftime break. Now, again, if you do pick up the first down, you can either call the timeout. The clock will stop as they move the chains. You might have an opportunity to convert here and kick a field goal before halftime. Fourth down. They need about five. Empty backfield for Perry. Here comes some pressure up the middle. Perry flushed out, and Wilbur will throw him forward, and he's going to be stopped. The pressure again from Marquez Wilbur, number 33, stopping Perry short and turning it over on downs. Wake Forest gets the football back with 10 seconds left in the half. Reggie Lucas is going to be very pleased with his defense at halftime. The way these guys are hustling, and just the technique that they're playing with. And many of these guys are playing both ways. And they're showing fight and hustle. Marquez Wilbur, oh, big sophomore, what, a, what a player. What a half he's having, just a sophomore. And he just stands out. I mean, these guys, when you watch this ball game, when they watch film over the weekend, these guys just flash the way they play. Let's see what Joe Anderson and the Cougars will do. They'll put it on the ground with 10 seconds left and dancing forward. Now inside the 50, hopping past one. That's Micah Alou, two seconds left, and he's shoved out of bounds around the 42-yard line. Jay, you could take a shot into the end zone. When Anderson has a strong arm, uh, his, his arm is impressive. I would not be surprised with where the ball is on the field. Yeah. They give him a chance. Hail Mary type or something underneath, maybe a deep crosser where you can get a guy running on over the middle of the field. Yeah, why not? They send Baz Knight to the left slot. Good one to the top of your screen. Josh Norris also goes left. Four receivers here. Look for this ball to get to the end zone. Here comes some big pressure off the edges. And sliding down is Anderson. He will not take his shot. The pressure did him in. And that will take us to a halftime here in Wake Forest. Entertaining game. Heritage just the one mistake down the stretch or else they're Heading to halftime with the lead. As it stands, though, it's a 10-10 stalemate at the break. Well, it's been a fun ball game and, you know, just love rivalry games because you can tell, by the way, the kids are playing how much this game means to each side, and I expect another close half coming up. All right, so it is 10-10, and Madison Little is down at the 30-yard line with Reggie Lucas.
All right, Coach, a fumble recovery led to a touchdown, a big stop on defense. How do you keep this momentum going into the second? Well, we get the ball, and I think we got to be have more productivity on offense. If we can get something going on offense, continue to play strong defense, we'll be okay. And we knew this was going to be a close game coming into this one. How do you break away and take the lead in the second? I think we drive the ball down the field, score, come back on defense, three and out, get the ball again, and score again. I mean, we got to score, and we got to stop. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Madison. Just that simple. Score, stop, score. Just like that, they're up 14. A lot of things to work on for the Wake Forest Cougars and the Heritage Huskies. Competitive game is week three of the Max 6. Undefeated Wake Forest in conference getting all they can handle from Heritage. Tied 10-10 at the break. You're watching the U.S. Army Halftime Report. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. And now it's time for the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. Presenting the award for Tatum and Atkinson is Season Atkinson. Tatum and Atkinson is proud to present the Friday Night Rivals Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week from Heritage High School. The Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week is Obina Azidi. Obina is a four-year football player, is academic all-conference, and carries a 4.25 GPA. Obina volunteers for his church, volunteers for food drives, and volunteers for the Nigerian Delta Association. From Wake Forest High School, the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week is Gavin Greer. Gavin is a football team captain, a multi-year football letter winner, is academic all-conference, and carries a 3.4 GPA. Gavin has volunteered over 50 hours of community cleanup efforts. Congratulations to our Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. This All-Star is now entered for a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Tatum and Atkinson, injured in a wreck? Call the heavy hitters. Congratulations once again to our Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes. We'll be back with more of your U.S. Army Halftime Show right after this. You're watching the U.S. Army Halftime Report. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. Welcome to the U.S. Army Halftime Show. I'm Madison Little, joined by Staff Sergeant Quentin Atkinson. Thank you so much for being our halftime sponsor. Thank you for having me. And can you describe your role in the Army to us? I'm a Staff Sergeant. I'm a 25 Hotel, which is a network communication specialist. I'm in the IT department of the Army, and it's done wonderful things for me. What did you do before you joined the Army? Uh, I did go to the University of North Carolina Central. Um, I played football there, and then after that, I transitioned to arena football. I definitely uh, wanted to make a career and I decided to join the Army after that. How do you feel that the Army has enhanced your life thus far? The living situation I'm in, um, traveling, and being able to learn a new job in IT, which is a passion of mine. And if students want to learn more, where can they go? Go to Go Army. Uh, you'll be able to put in your zip code and get you in contact with your local recruiter to be able to reach out to you and talk to you. Thank you so much for being our halftime sponsor. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here to partner in representing high school football. We'll be back with more of our U.S. Army halftime show right after this. You're watching the U.S. Army Halftime Report. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. Welcome back to our U.S. Army Halftime Report. I am so glad that I have the principal for Wake Forest, once again, Melissa Thomas, with me. This is a huge rivalry game. What does this mean to this Wake Forest community? So it's interesting because it is a big rivalry game. However, these kids all are friends and play sports outside of school together. And so we've had a lot of them going back and forth because they are friends. But yet we clearly want to win. They clearly want to win. So it's a big event for this. And it, they are our biggest rivals. So it's always fun to get to play them in events like this, especially homecoming. Yeah, like you said, it's homecoming. It's on Friday night rivals. And it's that rivalry game. What do events like this mean to these student athletes and to this community? So I think for our athletes, it's a chance to showcase their talent and all the hard work that they've put into this. And, you know, it also gives us a chance to celebrate the athletes and to showcase all that they do. I think they look forward to it. They've been prepping for it all week, and they were super pumped. So, Well, once again, thank you so much to Melissa Thomas, the principal for Wake Forest High School. We're going to send it back to the booth for some first half highlights. Only the principal of Wake Forest High School, yeah. Jay's former teacher at Wakefield High School. This is Thomas. She was awesome. <laughs> no, I, I saw her the last game we were here and hadn't seen her 
in, uh, in a while and just told her I was so proud of her because she's doing a great job here at Wake Forest and told her how much I enjoyed her class and learned so much from her. Thanks, Miss Thomas. I hope I was your favorite student. <laughs> oh, that's classic. All right, let's get some first half highlights here of a 10-10 draw between Heritage and Wake Forest. And Heritage started very, very strongly in the first couple of drives. Well, yeah, and coming out here, the offense of Heritage. Use the ability of Perry to you go with his legs, and then he showed off his arm going over the top and trying to take shots down the field. But I'll tell you, the defense is really good for Wake Forest. And early on, it was just a struggle with both offenses going back-to-back -back field goals. The defense has really took over. Yeah, Birch, the 30-yard field goal for the lead. Then the defense for Wake Forest began to make some plays. Shorter field, and this reception made uh, would set up the game tying field goal by Helfrich from 29 yards and early in the second quarter it was 3-3. And then Heritage jumped on the gas, five yard touchdown reception by Person. Three catches in that drive, but Jay, here's the critical play late second quarter on the attempted punt return. We were discussing, both teams no turnovers. Who will make a mistake? Who will create a turnover? And it was Wake Forest coming away with excellent field position. And they took advantage of it on the ground. O-line did their job. Michael Olu skips it in the end zone. And that made it 10-10 as we get a look at the first half stats. See an imbalance right there. Total yards, almost 100 more for Heritage in that first half of that turnover was critical. Yeah, that was the big part of the ball game. Each side very disciplined, only three total penalties. I'll tell you, each side trying to establish the running game. They both had short fields for portions of the first half, but here in the second half, I think going back to explosive plays, who's gonna get a big play over the top? What plays are gonna determine the outcome of this game? I think both coaching staffs are talking about protecting the football and zero turnovers this half. 10-10 to the break, more of the U.S. Army halftime show when we return. All right, thank you for joining us for the U.S. Army Halftime Report. We are ready now for the start of the third quarter. It's a big game inside the, uh, the NAC 6. Wake Forest comes in 2-0. Rollsville, the only other undefeated team. Wake Forest will take on Rollsville on the road next week. Heritage at 1-1. Still kind of an outside shot at sneaking into the postseason, but they have to really win out, including tonight on the road. They will play out. Jay's Wakefield High School next week and close things down with a very tough uh, Rollsville squad to close out the regular season. Only a couple of weeks left in the regular season. Ready to begin the third quarter. Time for the NC Safe kickoff. NC Safe, if you own a gun, lock it up together. Let's keep North Carolina safe. Heritage in the traveling white jerseys. Wake Forest on homecoming night in the all black. And the Cougars, who have not led in this game, will get possession to begin the third quarter. Returnable kick all the way across the field. This is Bass Knight. Bass Knight breaking up the sideline. A penalty marker is down, though. The return out to the 45-yard line, but the penalty marker is 20 yards back. And this one is coming back. That will negate a very good return by Michael Olu. And by my math, first penalty on Wake Forest in the game. First one of the night. He's trying to make a play, get a big return. Let's see the hold at the 25 yard line. Joshua Baznight, number two of the hold, block in the back. And let's go downstairs to Madison, who caught up heading out of intermission with Heritage head coach Wallace Clark. Yeah, Patrick, you told me he was happy with the game plan and how they were able to execute it mm -hmm. in that first half. Happy with the fight his team gave in that first half, but he wants them to be tighter on defense. I asked him how to keep putting LaDainian person in position to be successful, and he said, that's our guy. We just got to get him open. And also an update on Wake Forest, Amari Cook. He is in the medical tent with ice on that right knee, unlikely to return. Back right. to you guys. Good update. Thank you very much, Madison. Yeah, Amari Cook went down with a right leg injury late in that first half you can see him he's he wants to be out there with his team and it is heartbreaking on a night like this a rivalry game big important game as far as the conference championship run the wake force is hoping to be on to not be able to help out 
Loss of two on first down. Anderson will throw a long swing pass out to Josh Norris. Ducks out of the hands of a would-be tackler and knows his four another three or four yards. And that'll bring up third down and around six to go here on this opening drive of the second half for Wake Forest. And Anderson in the shotgun knows exactly where he's going. Quickly to the outside, Norris. A nice job catching it and getting away from one tackle. But with Cook out, these skilled players from Wake Forest have to step up and fill his void. Bass Knight and Norris both deployed now to the top slot of your screen. Third down and six. Here comes some pressure coming from a Heritage. And they stay on the ground. This will be about four yards short of the first down. So Heritage gets the job done defensively. They will force a three and out. They load the box and do a nice job just plugging up the lanes. Nowhere to go. They should get good field position to start off the second half. It's Kevin Sanchez, number 44, blew up that play. So here's the punt by Wake Forest. It's a low spinner that lands the 45 and kind of checks up. And this time there is no hair to Tusky anywhere in the vicinity of that punt that is down at around the 49 yard line by Wake Forest. All right, Jay, so we just heard from Heritage Head Coach Wallace Clark. What are you wanting to see from the Huskies in the second half? Well, I think, first of all, on the offensive end, they've got to find a way to slow down this pass rush and, and try to keep the defensive line in front of them. And I think the biggest thing is you want to give person as many carries as possible, as many touches, and then try to take some shots over the top, try to loosen up this defense. All right, it will be person on the first down carry, and he just kind of follows one of his linemen off that left side, put his hand on his lower back, and has forged his way forward. About six on the first down carry for Ladanian person. Well, he follows up front, Obiana Asidi, our scholar athlete tonight, clearing out the path. Doing a nice job staying patient, waiting for his blocks up front to develop. And the senior Ladanian Persons had a big one tonight, Patrick. And three receptions. Touchdown catch in that second quarter. He gets the call again, stays low, and gets undercut. After a pickup of a couple of yards, that's about it. Third and short, though, for the Huskies. And again, they've been very prolific on third down conversions tonight. Forest defensive line, the 3 4, they've shown different looks, and different ways to try to confuse the O line for Heritage. Two backs in the backfield, one back split, pistol set. It's a different look on third and short. And we'll see what the, what the Cougars do defensively. They're pressing the line here, expecting it to stay on the ground. It's in the hands of Perry. Sprints to the right, cuts abruptly upfield. He's close. His lineman thinks he has the first down. It'll depend on the spot. But either way, you know the offense is going to stay out there, and they will signal first down for Heritage. With the play design, the fake, and this was quarterback designed run all the way, just having confidence that Perry with that fake can get the defense off balance and he can get to the outside. Air Experts heating, cooling, and plumbing first down. Schedule your tune up today at airexperts.com. So the Huskies working with a fairly short field, convert the first down. They're inside the 40-yard line now of Wake Forest. 10-10 tie, about four minutes gone by in the third quarter. Cole Perry's taking a couple of shots downfield. He'll retreat. And a running back screen. They get in the hands of Person, and he's pinwheel down inside the 30, pickup of almost 12. It's been a very effective play. Just quickly get into the hands of Person on the screen to the running back Person. And just different ways to keep the defense honest and off balance with Person. We've seen him line up in the slot, different spots in the backfield used in passing situations, and they are just an intermediate little screen, a little change up. Bradley Fournier, the offensive coordinator, going back to that to pick up a first down. I mean, it's really one way to neutralize Wilbert and Perry as they've been kind of living in the backfield off the defensive line. Not much here in the sideline. Yard or two for Person. All right, let's go downstairs to Madison. 
Harrison Bunker back in pads for his senior year. He missed all of last season recovering from a kidney transplant. Mm. Following his sophomore season, he was told his kidneys were failing, was put on dialysis immediately until he was able to get the transplant six months later, his uncle being his donor. And through all of that, he told me football is what gave him hope and motivated him to get healthy. Now he's all clear to play and says, everything I went through taught me I can do hard things. That's a great story. Much more than football. Yeah. I like this when you hear stories. Yeah. There he is right there on the sideline for Wake Forest. Just so proud of him and Coach Lucas. Just proud Thank of you. him and what he's done and to you know, battle through that and you know, have an opportunity now to be back out playing the game he loves. And I talked to Madison who, who talked with Harrison and she was just talking so highly of the person Harrison was and just his story and his background is amazing. Looking on from that sideline, hoping his defense can get a stop. Third and five now for Heritage. 10-10 tie, third quarter. Rivalry game, key game inside the league. Perry pump fake, nothing. Now he'll swing it out as kind of the outlet receiver and undershot him. Looking for Corella Pantaleone. And it will now be fourth down. Well, Birch hit a 30-yard field goal in the first quarter. This would be about 39 if they elected to try it, but the offense remains on the field here for Heritage, so Wallace Clark is going to go for it on fourth and five. Five receiver formation. Some time to throw. Slings it out to the sideline, and a fingertip catch is made by Person. And Person angle out around the 16-yard line. That's just enough. It's a fourth down conversion for the Huskies. He's amazing. And this is person, the running back, lined up as a wide receiver. I mean, there's very few backs in the NFL that can run routes and be effective as a wide receiver. And he makes it look easy. I mean, you think about Christian McCaffrey, a couple other guys, but he's a running back. He's a wide receiver. He can do it all. And what a big part of this offense. A great year he's had as a senior. So inside the UNC Blue Zone, UNC, GoHeels.com. That was a pinpoint long pass made by Cole Perry and a fingertip catch sprinting to the right side this is Grant Day cuts back avoids one tackle loses the football and Wake Forest is going to pick it up around the 10 yard line another critical mistake by the Huskies and the second one given up by Day number 22 the other came on the pickup of a punt late in that first half, and he gets stripped. The ball right out of his right arm, and the Cougars covered up. Now the initial pressure up the middle by Jalil Perry, and then the defense flowing over to the football, and they're knocking it loose. What a job just dislodging that yeah. ball by Gavin McLawhorn, the sophomore linebacker in this defense, playing so physical coming up with the big play, Reggie Lucas has to be so happy with that tenacity. So they snuff out the drive by Heritage that looked like it was certainly going to give the Huskies the lead. Second turnover in critical fashion here by Heritage in their last, what, three possessions. So Wake Forest long field ahead of them, but still locked in a 10-10 game. Gain of a couple of yards on first down. Joe Anderson did not start for Wake Forest. Owen McNair did, but a couple of empty drives. And then Anderson came on and made some good decisions and some good throws. And he's throwing here, pressure, escapes, and then gets wrapped up from behind and is sacked back inside the 10 yard line. The defense for Heritage standing up and making a play. This missed assignment up front, the pressure coming through, nowhere to go. And there's the hustle. You've got to play as a defender with passion, hustle, and fly around to the football. And Alex Ortiz, the junior linebacker, stepping up. Right there, big play. Lost three, third down and 11. And they pass across the 20 yard line. That's. Isaiah Goodwin with the reception. It will be a catch. It looked like the Huskies thought that ball might have skipped in. And that is going to be enough for a first down. We haven't seen a lot of third down long conversions by Wake Forest, but this is a big one. A huge. 
Joe Anderson staying strong. Oh, in the pocket. The I ball know, Jay. sliding through. They're going to say it's completion. Move the change very close. That ball got through and hit the ground. Should have been incomplete. But instead, the quick snap. And now a run for about 13 or 14 yards. So right now, the pendulum and the genie dust beginning to go in Wake Forest way. Let's see, catch or ground? I say ground. Now that's definitely incomplete. That's a no doubter. I like how Wake Forest so quickly runs up to the line of scrimmage, playing with tempo now, gaining some momentum. Now the 35-yard line, first down. Long pass out to the left side. Baz Knight with the catch, and he's across the 45, and that's going to move the chains. There's a lot of a lot of positive body language right now on that Wake Forest sideline. You can just see the tempo, the momentum shifting slowly, and after the turnover, you know, kind of feeling that big play from the defense now trying to take advantage of it. Out to the 46-yard line, first down again for the Cougars. Quick inside handoff. And into Huskies territory, about five, maybe six on that carry by Norris. Now that catch slash incompletion, that was a yeah. third down play. That's a punt that's a if the call is, yeah. is seen and made. Instead, heavy marching now by Wake Forest upfield. And that is incomplete on the sideline looking for Olu. Third down. Different personnel in the ball game with the injuries. Cook out. There's Olu coming out of the ball game as well. So different guys having to step up and play in different spots. Haven't heard a lot from Herb Pringle lately. He's at the bottom of your screen at number five. They keep it on the ground. Norris dancing forward and look at him drive and will pick up a another very important first down for Wake Forest. Norris, the senior, showing power. This team needed, this is a big third down conversion. They're doing well on this drive. They need to pick up another one. He just stays low, finishes off the run, falling forward. So down to the 42-yard line, first down, Wake Forest. Pressure on Anderson, pumping, sprinting away, and he's sacked for a loss. So Heritage gets in, Kevin Sanchez, number 44, and Anderson feeling the after effects there, cramps or maybe an injury on the back end of that sack. And Sanchez was double teamed, just kept fighting, got off the blocks right in the middle of the defense, and the senior showing passion, intensity after the play. And, and they'll take Anderson. a look at the Wake Forest quarterback. Joe Anderson is down, cramping when we return. Time for the Publix Smile Cam. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Chilly nights here in Wake Forest, but still plenty of smiles around on this homecoming night in Wake Forest High School. Well, a double cramp suffered by Wake Forest quarterback Joe Anderson. He is on the sideline. So we will see Owen McNair, who started for the first time in his career. Got a couple of series in the first quarter. Didn't lead to any points, but he's back out here for Probably just one play as Anderson's on the sideline. 10-10 tie, late third quarter. This is a second and 14. And look at McNair. He's looking to throw. Pressure from the backside. Tries to escape. Flips it forward. And is that a fumble or is that a pass? It's picked up by Heritage. I heard no whistle. And Heritage has the football. Now the officials will get together. Was that a forward pass attempt? Or was the ball just simply knocked out of his arms forward, Jay? Well, they're going to discuss this. We'll have to see. Initially, it looked like maybe a fumble, but they're going to circle up, make sure they get the call correct. And you see the Wake Forest players, they're trying to eavesdrop on the conversation. They're pointing to their sideline saying, yeah, they're saying it's passed, but it is not decided yet. Jim Ellis, 37 years as an official, he's in the white cap, and he is hearing it from all sides on what everybody else saw. And it is a fumble. Declared a fumble and a recovery by Heritage. Well, let's take a look at this as McNair's scanning the field. Here comes the pressure. That's yeah. the right call. Good, good call there. 
Jones. The arm was starting to come up. The ball gets dislodged. An excellent work. Yeah. How about the tackle? Stripping it. Gabe Roberts, number 24, just going for the ball. Left hand on the shoulder, then just punching it loose with the right hand. Well, they, they got that call right. That was fantastic. And I tell you what, McNair's in there for one play. As Anderson, you know, is coming back after the cramp. That's the one thing you have to stress to quarterback. Don't make a mistake. Frankly, I'm surprised they gave him the opportunity to throw the football on that play. And that costs Wake Forest dearly. First down, Heritage on the first turnover of the night on Wake Forest. And now we get a timeout called before the first play of this new drive for the Huskies. 155 in the third quarter, 10 10 tie. Boy, that, that is a lifeline for Heritage. A reminder coming up in the fourth quarter of tonight's game, Jay and I will select the U.S. Army player of the game. Brought to you by the United States Army. Be all you can be. We've seen some challenging moments tonight for both teams on on big momentum swings that you do not expect. That is exhibit A for Wake Forest. Now we'll see how it, you look at their uh, body language over there. They're they're bothered. They're yep. disappointed. We'll see how they reply. And let's go downstairs. We talk about the rivalry between Heritage and Wake Forest. Madison will add some more color to that. Yeah, Patrick, this game means that much more to Reggie Lucas. This is home to him. He grew up here, his family is here, and he played here. He told me when he left for college, he knew he needed to come back and give back. He returned, immediately got into coaching, and has been here since. He got on staff in 1995, took over in 2009 when given the opportunity, and led his former team. He told me this is where he's meant to be. He never considered going anywhere else and has no plans to ever leave. And his family, friends, they're all here supporting him and the Cougars tonight. And Jay, you've been around high school football. I mean, this is your area. This was your league. I mean, uh, what has he meant for not just the Wake Forest program, but the conference and kind of the conference standing across the across the state. Well, it's amazing. I mean, that's that's the thing. He's he's well known, respected throughout the state because of his success. But just talking and working with Coach Lucas and getting to know him through the years, he's first class. He's amazing, and just love the friendship you know you develop with these coaches. And Coach Lucas is such an amazing coach, but also it's what he does off the field. I mean, you know, all these guys just care about these kids, and it's evident in getting to know him and just impressed by him. That was a phenomenal run right there by Cole Perry. And Marquez Wilbur had to chase him down from behind about six yards. Watch Perry here. This is intended to be a pass. Makes a quick little Nintendo spin to get out of traffic, and then just kind of burns his way forward. And now watch the chase, 33. I mean, he continues to hustle. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'll tell you what, though, for these players, they know the film is going to be on them. And when the coaches see you not giving up and continuing to run down, I mean, you're going to get a lot of credit for that in film study. It's 13 on the carry, second and short. And out of a tackle, that's Person. He tumbles forward for a first down, down to the Wake Forest 45-yard line. Closing in on one minute left in the third quarter. As we get close to the fourth quarter, I mean, Patrick, this is what we expected. There's Person with his shoe. Yeah, lost his, uh, his green cleat. About to come off at least for a play. I mean, this is what you thought was going to happen. The pregame, we're talking about rivalry ball game. Each side, very even as the tackle is made. The shoe just gets ripped off. I mean, the tackle wasn't made by the guy who took off his cleats. <laughs> <laughs> First down, but. Person to the sideline for a play. It's an alley give us to Corella Pantaleon. Haven't heard a lot from him tonight. A nice angle run for about eight yards into the Heritage sideline. Good play. And a penalty marker comes in late. I think this is going to be 15 tacked on by Wake Forest. Looks like a face mask, perhaps, right into the sideline. Personal foul variety, and that is a large 15 on top of the eight yard gain. You penalties tonight. This is a big one. The 15 yards to lay off the helmet area. Good call from the refs. This drive will continue to move on with this penalty, and Heritage is starting to march. Person back on the field. And that will, on the back end of the penalty move, this 
Down close to the red zone, the 22 yard line, first down. Air Experts heating, cooling, and plumbing first down. Schedule your tune up today at airexperts.com. Well, the Huskies have been here before, right? Close to the 20 yard line. They coughed him the last time. They give it to the reliable person. He can't quite stretch out of an ankle tackle. Picks up four on first down. Looks like they're going to let the clock run to the fourth quarter. We're keeping it on the ground. This has been their bread and butter. Shotgun formation, giving the ball to Person, letting him go to work. So that will take us to the final 12 minutes. Rivalry game in Wake Forest and a very important game inside the neck. Heritage one and one in league play. Wake Forest one and two unbeaten. Stalemate through three, 10-10. Huskies driving as the fourth quarter begins. Don't go anywhere. All right, let's check out the Leith Acura game summary for the first half. Leith Acura in Raleigh. All right, fourth quarter. This is a big one coming up at each side. You know, look at it, and it's kind of been two to one on turnovers. Heritage out gain Wake Forest, but we have a tied ball game so which team is going to protect the ball and you know with heritage can you extend this drive and finish yeah. in the end zone this will be a big momentum push if you can knock this in all right final 12 minutes here we go second down and five and there is wilbert again in the backfield slowing down ladani in person i mean marquez wilbert has been everywhere remember he's just a sophomore yeah. and he's had his hands on about 10 or 12 tackles and a couple of quarterback curries in this one tonight. And I mean, he just flies into the backfield. The effort that he plays with, uh, he is so difficult to block with not only one guy, but two guys, and he's been double teamed, still making plays. No gain, third down and five. Line of scrimmage is a 17. Showing blitz, and oh, Wake Forest. That was Landon Misning, number 13, who was going to be coming off that left edge, try to time the snap, and he crossed into the neutral zone. That not only is a penalty, it's going to erase a third and five and give Heritage an automatic first down. Haven't seen a lot of mistakes tonight, but some crucial yeah. ill-timed mistakes. So you're just trying to be aggressive, trying to make a play. It's going to set up a first down coming up. Right now down to the 12-yard line. So inside the UNC Blue Zone, UNC, goheels.com. First down, Heritage looking to take their third lead of the night. Slants. Oh, and that is a pinpoint pass. Did it get through? It did. What a throw by Cole Perry. Right into the chest of Carter. Well, this was amazing. I mean, the ability to set up your feet, know where you're going with the ball, play action pass, quick slant from Carter, and just protecting himself from the defender, boxing him out, getting down low for it. Perry throwing it perfectly. And now whistled just as the play and the ball was snapped. They got it to person, but the play is called dead. I mean, there were hands up trying to swat that pass away. Tight window. That was the best throw we've seen from any quarterback tonight. But now the Huskies will retreat five yards in the fall start. Let's take one more look at, to me, the best pass we've seen all night long. This is a timing route. You just got to flip your hips, trust your wide receiver, and Carter being at the right spot. Perry, you know, with that ball, you can't miss to the inside. You have to keep it low and hit it right on your chest to the wide receiver. He did it, and you know, I really just like the flow of the offense on this drive. Penalty backs the Huskies up to the nine-yard line, second down. They can get a first down at the two. They lateral to Purse. He's going to throw back corner of the end zone too high. Off of the fingertips. He wanted Rayon Rockliffe in the back right corner of the end zone. Incomplete, and it's third down. Penalty marker down, and a legal man downfield on Heritage. So it will remain second down, but they continue to recede on this drive further and further away from the goal line. Just a quick pitch to the outside. Trick play. This person's going to become quarterback. Ball just sails. Well, Heritage. Up until about a minute ago, had three penalties all game, back-to-back -back penalties now. And it is second down. They were down to the, what, nine-yard line. Now they're back up to the 14. Still second down. 
Perry. Throwing again, hard over the middle, and he threw behind the intended receiver, looking for Rockcliffe one more time. And now it will be third down. And this is big, coming up third and 12, and you know, obviously you want to score a touchdown here, but you can't take a sack. You have to protect the ball because you have potential points with the field goal. So you want to be aggressive. You just have to be careful where you pick your spot. And, Jay, the way that both defenses are playing, a field goal here could oh, yeah. be enough. Yeah. The way the defense has played for the Huskies. Late sub onto the field for Wake Forest as Ethan Nichols, number 21, comes in. Third down. They need 12. They're from the 14-yard line. Quarterback keeper Perry to the right, nowhere to go. Noses forward, picks up a couple. And that is going to bring up fourth down on the left hash, which is the angle Ryland Birch knocked in a field goal back in the first quarter. And here comes Birch to try and give Heritage the lead. Well, and really good job from the Wake Forest defense. And just making sure you keep the ball in front tackle to force the field goal. But this will be big for Heritage to get a lead an inch forward if you can knock this through. But again, mistakes. You had the muffed punt in the first half that cost you seven points when Wake Forest scored. Then you fumble in the third quarter in the red zone. Now there's movement on the left side of the line. It's fourth and eight. So if this is offsides, it still won't be enough to give Heritage a first down. But again, you go back to what Wallace Clark in his head and is, uh, is offsides against Wake Forest. This will make it a little bit shorter kick if they want to keep the kicker on the field. And they're going to change their minds here. So they're calling Birch off of the field, and the offense returns for Heritage on fourth and three. Interesting decision here. But again, the penalties have forced the, yeah. the hand of the Huskies to think about kicking when they're right on the doorstep. Well, I think in this situation, to go for it. You must like your play call with where this is with fourth and three. Again, they can get a first down without scoring. They're looking Rock Clips way. Dancing around is Perry. A lot of time. Now being chased. He's in trouble. And Perry is going to get sacked back outside the 20 yard line. It's Isaiah Hayes, number 66 for Wake Forest as the defense at the back end held up. And then finally, the defensive line collapsed and takes down Perry in a fourth down play. And the Cougars do not allow Heritage to break the top. And this is one of the plays of the game to this point. Haynes just fighting, battling as Perry's running around. He just keeps working. 66 finally finishes it off with the sack. And not only does the defense get off the field, no points from Heritage. That sack was so critical that it moved up about 15 yards to help out their offense on the drive. And this drive now begins at the 20-yard line. Four yards on first down for Wake Forest. But, I mean, you go back to what Wallace Clark said they needed to do. Play clean, not make mistakes. Penalty killed off that drive. Penalty gave you hope. Took the field goal unit off the field. Didn't pay off. But you've been in the, inside the red zone twice. Have fumbled it away, and now a turnover on downs and no points in either drop. And just a big play from Isaiah. I mean, again, this defensive line, there's full intensity, full effort. Those guys just continue to battle up front, and it pays off for Haynes. Second down. Anderson, after dealing with cramps, fires to the flat to the right side for a couple yards. Third down, the tackle by Derek Cooley. But again, you get into a situation like that, you don't want to say it's a guaranteed three in the field goal try even after the offside penalty. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a gamble. That's a, it's a coach's decision to take your field goal unit off the field in a tie game on the road. And we'll see if that costs Heritage down here in this fourth quarter. 8.20 to play, third down. And now the defensive line gets through for Heritage, and they will make this stop. Ball comes loose, but it is down by contact. No fumble. And it will be fourth down, however, for Wake Forest. That is a very impressive three and out for the Husky defense. Well, it is a sudden change. This defense having to come out on the field after they thought they were going to get points, and they do the job. And here's the pressure from their front seven. I don't know, Jay. That looked, that looked to me like Kevin Sanchez got that out because momentum had not been stopped on that, was, on that run. He was going after knocking it loose. But regardless here, they should get good field position. Twin safeties are back for Heritage 
outside the 50 yard line. No pressure on the punts. And this will land, bounce straight up and really nowhere. Down at the 42 yard line by Wake Forest. So the sudden change does not bother the Husky defense. Heritage gets the three and out. They're back on offense in a tie game. Midway through the fourth quarter in a rivalry game in Wake Forest. Heritage back on offense and they have seen a lot of obstacles at some key moments in this one, yet they're still locked in a 10-10 game and have the football back. Fumble in the red zone, cost them some points. They had shoot a field goal a moment ago after penalty, went for it on fourth down, got sacked. But the defense gets the football back at three and out. So Cole Perry back on the field. The drive begins for Heritage at the 41-yard line in a 10-10 game. Perry retreats. They set up a screen for Person with blockers. Midfield and angled out around the 47-yard line inside Wake Forest territory. And Person's been one of the stars of the game. Him and Perry have had a really good connection. They go back to the screen and the offensive line. We talked about it with four seniors up front. Right, the strength of the offense doing the job, clearing a path. Air Experts heating, cooling, and plumbing first down. Schedule your tune up today, airexperts.com. First down reception for Person. And Perry on the ground now to Person. And he has stood up right at the line of scrimmage. And now we get late flag coming in, yeah, from the back judge. Heritage sideline going crazy in a positive manner. This one may go on Wake Forest. Game like this, moment like this, six minutes left. If this is 15 on Wake, it's critical, and it is. I mean, as well as both defenses has played, you just can't give 15 free yards on really a, a, a silly mistake away from the play, really when the play is over. When throughout the broadcast, we've talked about rivalry ball game and how close we expected this ball game to be, especially here in the fourth quarter. Everything will be magnified for each side. They have to try to minimize those mistakes. And Reggie Lucas trying to find out exactly what happened on the back end of that play. Moves the ball down to the 31 first down for Heritage. This is off the right side person, a little patient run. He's inside the 30 yard line, then chased back. Remember, Heritage High School just opened 14 years ago. They were 0-13 against Wake Forest historically until last year. And it was a 23-21 tight victory for the first time ever. And now they're trying to beat Wake Forest for the first time here, and that's a whole different animal, but they're putting themselves in position to do just that. And again, they started this year 0-6 before winning last week. Second down. Carilla, no, that's a person again to the right side. Chased out around the 24-yard line, so Third and about three and a half, maybe four for Heritage. Inside six minutes for the fourth quarter. In this game, I mean, we're inside of six yeah. minutes. Limited possessions, I would expect. And it's going to be important for Heritage. Finish, you have to finish your drives inside the red zone. Now, I think at this point of the field, I mean, we saw Birch's 30-yard field goal. It was low. It didn't have a great deal of distance. This might be outside of his range. So if they don't pick up the first down here, we'll see if the offense stays out again. Third and three. Perry, time to throw. One on one pass left side and batted away. Incomplete. Defended by Nico Hunter. And it is fourth down. Darius Carter, the intended target. Hunter, six foot three, long wingspan. Perfect job in coverage. Flips his hips. As his trailing Carter turns around. That is excellent technique. I mean, that is perfect. It's exactly how you want it to be done. And there just knocks it loose. And again, what that play call tells you and tells me on third and three, as Heritage does call a timeout, if you're making that kind of pass play on third and three in your mind, you've already committed all in going for it on fourth down, although Heritage will discuss. 
5.51 left. All right, if that's if yeah. that's where they're going, what play call? We've seen them in these fourth and two, fourth and three a handful of times. They frankly have not executed all that well in these situations. I think in this situation, my, my two thoughts are getting Perry to the outside, let him pick it up with his legs, or if you want to go through the air, try to get person in the slot, one-on-one -on -one route, quick out route. You don't need much here, only three yards. He's been your go-to guy tonight, number three, and just let him go to work. All right, remember, they had a fourth and three a moment ago in field goal range, went for it. We saw the coverage downfield, uh, brilliant by Wake yeah. Forest. How are you defending if those well, are the two main options? How are you defending? Yeah, and Reggie Lucas talking his, to his team in the huddle. I think the main message is up front, we have to get pressure, and then I think they've got to find a way to try to make Perry uncomfortable, but keep your eyes on number three. I would kind of shade towards him, bring a safety down to try to lock him up. All right, they're gonna play a tight formation here. Grand Day, who has fumbled twice in this second and a half for Heritage to the bottom of your screen. Person in the backfield, left of the quarterback, Perry. Third, check that fourth and three. And they're going to swing it quickly at Person, and he will get by one. Can he get by the others? He's fighting forward, still on his feet, and this will be close. I don't know that he got there. The effort was tremendous by Person. First would be tackler missed, but then he was stopped by a couple of others, and he will be short. And Wake Forest will take over on downs again. Amazing effort from the Cougars defense. There it is, giving the ball to Person. The initial hit, great job coming up was Nico Hunter to force him back inside. Then the Cougars just rounded the ball, stopping him right before he got to the first down marker. So with 5.41 to go, Wake Forest will get the football. However, Marquez Wilberts, I believe, is down. He went down right at the end of that play. And he has been arguably their top defensive player in this game. And he's up right here and hobbling off. And he is in some serious pain. He has been ubiquitous on this field tonight for Wake Forest. He's favoring that right leg. The defense gets the stop again. That's two enormous fourth down stops for the Wake Forest defense in this fourth quarter, deep in their own territory. 5.41 to go. Wake Forest all three timeouts. 10-10 tie, and Joe Anderson trying to lead Wake Forest. They have not led all game long. They set up the screen. It's Alou, and Alou is stood up after a couple-yard game. And now the hits are coming hard and loud as we go into the final four or five minutes of this one. Well, last year was down to the wire. Yeah. The same thing here and for Heritage. Are your defense out on the field? Can you get pressure on Anderson? And they get it there, but it's perfectly designed with the screen. They pick up a couple. The snap will come with about five minutes to go. Play fake. Anderson over the middle, incomplete. Tipped away, no flag coming in. That's Sean Allen on the coverage. Pretty good throw, though, by Anderson. Third down. And Allen, we've called his name a couple times tonight. In the back end, there is that right arm in position, but then knocks it down with his left. Hey, you said it earlier, that the officials are letting the DBs yeah. and the guys in the secondary play. And it's been physical, but I like that because you don't you don't want to pull game where they're throwing flags all the time. Let the kids play. I really think the officials have done a great job. Third down and seven for the Cougars. 10-10 tie. Here comes some pressure. Anderson dumps it off. The catch made. The second effort is going to get the first down for Wake Forest. Micah Alou kind of bumped off a would-be tackler who didn't really go for the tackle, just went for the hit. And Alou maintained his composure and did pick up the first down. Well, this is the play of the game on the offensive side. We saw Isaiah Haynes have it on defense for Wake Forest earlier. They had to pick that up, and Anderson got hit, and Alou gets it. Oh, and a loose ball in the exchange! And it's on the deck, and Wake Forest is on its... That never really got to Olu's hands. And that ball hit the turf and Olu fell on. 
Look how close it. Seth Rucker was to get in on that one for Heritage. Inches. The eyes just lit up for Heritage. Loss of four. 4-13 for regulation. 10-10 tie. Anderson three-step drop. He will heave deep down the right side. Incomplete. In the double coverage. Pringle the intended target. Third down. For Heritage defense, all right, it's third and long. You've done your job the first two downs, but you've got to keep everything in front of you and also rally to the football, play as one, because this would be a backbreaker if you give up a first down here. And main thing, too, for Wake Forest, try to find a one-on-one -on -one situation on the, out, on the outside. Try to get a crossing route or a deep go. Here we go, third down and 14. Anderson. Off balance throw, too high, incomplete. He was looking for Norris. And every time Heritage's offense puts their defense in a bad spot, the Huskies' defense has gotten the stop the very next drive. And it's fourth down again for Wake Forest, and they'll have to kick it away. Yeah, they come through, get it off the field. I like this play. It was a deep dig. The tight end coverage, and the Huskies 404 left. You have a timeout. The goal here is a score, but also use this clock up. Day in person back to return for the Huskies. Play clock down to nine, and Wake Forest needs one player to get on that field. They're going to have to burn a timeout here, Jay. That could be important. 4.04 to go. Wake Forest was one player light. And they take a timeout late in the fourth before they punt. 10-10 tie. Coming night to Wake Forest High School. Congrats to the King. It's a 10 10 tie. 4 04 to play in regulation. And Wake Forest is about to punt the football away, but they were one player short of their 11 before they punted, so they do take a timeout. Leaves the Cougars now with two. This is a game where Wake Forest has not led. A fairly clean opening quarter, then some critical mistakes. Penalties, turnovers, a couple in the red zone. High snap, and the punt is sent on its way by Helfrich. And it's a very good one. Takes a solid wake for his bounce down to the 23-yard line. It's a 43-yard kick. So Heritage with a timeout left, 3.50 on the clock. If you had told Wallace Clark this would be the situation, Back on Monday, game week of arrival, 10-10, your ball. You need about 50 yards to get into field goal range to try and win it on the road. You take it. Yeah. And for Wake Forest defense, who's played so hard all night, Wilbert is back out on the field. Now he's going to come yep. off. And he's been a key guy on the yep. defensive end, and you can see him still in pain. Yeah, I think he, he ran on the field to kind of test it and said, no, can't do it. Here we go, first down. They throw the flat for person incomplete. Landed at his shoes. Now he's going to come back out on the field yeah. showing that fight and knowing what this game means. And so the Jesus departs, and number 33, who's been a difference maker, is back on the field for the Cougars. That's Marquez Wilbur, just a sophomore. Second and 10 for the Huskies. Showing pressure, Wake Forest. Here they come, quarterback draw, and getting to the second level, Perry, out to about the 30. He was about a step away from really breaking that one free. Third down. I've seen the quarterback run tonight, and it's been successful. Bradley Fournier, the offensive coordinator, Wallace Clark, really putting trust in Cole Perry, who's had a big night. Well, how big is this play right here? You pick up the first down, you might be able to run the clock out and maybe win it. If you don't, you're kicking away and give Wake Forest a chance to steal it. Heritage thought that there was an infraction in the neutral zone. No call. Play clock at two. Perry, the quick give person up the middle, tackled forward. He's very close, and I think he has it. You're going to give it to him. If he's tackled down, 
he's short maybe, maybe a yard, but he was tackled from behind with momentum moving forward. forward. And that's what got him a first down. And this is a good job from the Wake Forest defense. I mean, they get him, they crowd going for the ball. Wait, they're going to pull it back here yeah. and say he didn't get it. You're right, so. Jay. Those, those digital down markers say four. They had yeah, moved they the chains. They moved the chains already. And that's the issue over there on the sideline. They had already moved the chains, assuming it was a first down, but it's fourth. The clock has stopped. The play clock has not started. And the officials will need to square this one up. And the offense, meanwhile, still on the field for Heritage. They have gone for it twice on fourth down in plus territory, and they are going to talk about it here. This is a gigantic play call for Heritage. The team is one and six. You've beaten Wake Forest once in your school's lifetime. You're on the road, it's tied. You have a chance to pick up a yard to go down the field and win it. I don't think they're punting either. Yeah, I think they're staying on the field, and <laughs> this is a timeout not to decide, yeah. but a timeout to make sure everyone's on the same page. And you kind of have the ball in your hands and in control of this if you pick this up. And I think you know, they're going to take their time and, and try to figure out the best option to attack this fourth down. All right, let's take a look at the Leith Acura game summary. Leith Acura in Raleigh. Well, each side, you know, I'll tell you what, it's 10 to 10. But each side have had, has had big moments, big plays, the total yards in Heritage's favor. But overall, it's been an even game. We talked as we were going to the fourth quarter. It's going to come down to the end, which team will make the big play. You know, stats are pretty even, but who's going to make the big play late in the fourth quarter? And this is the play of the game here. We had some big moments. But if you're Wake Forest and if you can cut them down again for the third time in this quarter on fourth down and take over here you're almost already in field goal range with an well, excellent place kick yeah and on for wake forest's side this defense that's been playing so well tonight you say hey guys yeah. one more stop and look who's out there 33 yeah. is out there one, one more stop and we're in the driver's seat <laughs> We just need one more play. Yeah, there, there's Wilbert. He does not want to stand still. I mean, it's about 50 degrees. He just took a big hit, limped off of the field a moment ago, came back on, then had to leave the field. He's back on there. If he stands still, he gets tight. And so he, during this entire timeout, he has not stopped moving. And they need him, even for just his presence, they need him on this fourth down play. And boy, does this feel like a long timeout? It is. I mean. <laughs> Both sides getting a rest. Yeah. They just want to get back out there. Yeah. And Wallace Clark, I mean, he's out in the field in the 30 yard line. Are, are they still trying to figure out where the spot of the football is here? Yeah, no, look. I mean, they're still kind of. They they're are, still, they're, they're, they're going to measure. measure here, Jay. So here's an extra plot this, twist. To me, the initial look is it may be fourth and inches, not even fourth and yeah. one. Or, I mean, if this is a first down, that changes everything. Remember, they moved the chains thinking it was a first down a moment ago, then they had to move them back. So this might not be totally precise. They are a little short, though, by that angle. So it That's will be as fourth close down. As it gets. It is going to be four down. But again, that's imprecise because those chains had been moved. And then the officials said, wait, we have them short. You got to move the chains back. So they're not exactly where they were. They can eyeball it and be close. And I think that's what has Wallace Clark so upset there. And Wake Forest defensive line. All right, you figure possibly Quarterback sneak, but the strength for Wake Forest has been this D line. They've got to show up here. All right, here they come. So Heritage in the white uniforms. They will have Person in the backfield. You have to figure it's either him or just a QB sneak. But they're putting Perry out of the out of the pistol formation here. And the officials are still talking right over where the ball was marked. And they're now. The play clock has not yet started. And after a long break, now we get the play of the game here. Fourth down in inches for Heritage in a tie game late fourth quarter in their own territory. Here we go. 
And now are they going to try and draw Wake Forest off sides? Still 13 seconds in the play clock. And now whistles. And Heritage has taken a timeout. Did they have a timeout left? Heritage head coach is looking at the scoreboard, which now shows zero for timeouts. And now Wallace Clark is talking with the official. The official pulled out his card. He may be showing him a, you call it a timeout here, a timeout here, and a timeout here. They may not have a timeout left. The scoreboard might have been wrong. And if that's the case, that's going to be a penalty on Heritage. It would take you away from fourth yeah. and inches, Dan. You might have to punt the football. Well, it looks like they're still discussing everything, but you're correct. We'll see what the final determination yeah. is. We haven't seen them signal anything. And, and yeah, all the officials have their cards out on because this is like double redundancy. Everybody is writing down as far as the officials go when timeouts are taken so that they can have and make the right decisions in moments like these. The offense is still on the field for Heritage. The officials are still over the football and evidently there will be no penalty and perhaps that was the last time out. So here we go again. How much buildup can we have to the biggest play of the game? Fourth and in inches Heritage. Tie game. The give, the hit, and the stick in the backfield by Wake Forest. And the, the Cougars send Jalil Perry firing like a rocket to take down person. First down the other way for Wake Forest in a 10-10 tie late fourth quarter. And the hustle, winning on the backside, Jalil Perry comes in, flies into the screen, and makes the big hit, and now the momentum shift over to the Cougar sideline. You're already in great field position to try to win the game. I mean, that was the fear. One of the options we said, if you don't get it, you give them with a great field goal kicker, excellent field position in a tie game. Reception made, but the knee was down for Josh Norris. And that actually will be a loss of a yard. And Perry makes that play, then stays out on the field because he's playing yeah. right tackle and just admire his effort and these other guys for both teams that are playing both ways. You just got to look a moment ago at Evan Helfrich, the excellent field goal kicker for Wake Forest. This homecoming game to try and keep Wake Forest undefeated might be on his boot. Muff snap, catch, dropped again, picked up by the Cougars for a second time. And they are coloring themselves very fortunate on that play. That ball hit the ground twice, both times live. There's the first little muff by Anderson. Then the catch here by Norris, then he dropped it and bounced right back to him. No credit just to continue huh. on. Now third and six. Now this is no yeah. gimme field goal here. He's talking 46 yards if they don't pick up a, a yard here on third down. Game clock at 112. And they're running it on the ground. There goes Alou to the right side. First down and more. Alou down to the 10. And now the checkered flag is in view. But there's a penalty marker down, though, Jay, back at the 25-yard line. Oh, and this is going on, Wake Forest. And I saw the gesture there by Anderson. Is this a face mask on the, on the Cougars? That would be an unusual call on the offense. This mask are hold. Here's the call. It's a face yeah, mask. Wow. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Where is it? Was it? Was it Pringle number five? Middle of that play. Right there. That is going to knock Wake Forest back to the 40-yard line. That's going to change the complexion. Oh, goodness. The game was in a hand if there's no fast match. Watch number five. Yeah, I think it was already beyond the play. Here we go, third down. 
Anderson in trouble. And that another flag comes in on the right sideline. And this one looks to be going on Heritage. A few penalties all oh game. Boy. Now just waiting to see the result. And this is pass interference on Heritage. It will remain third down. And now we'll see where they spot it. It's 15 yards. Yeah. Well, that's, that's going to put Helfrich back in the equation here if Wake Forest doesn't pick anything else up. We're right back to third down in about four. I, I would expect to run. Give it back to Alou. 44 seconds left. Third down again for Wake Forest. They're going to switch the ball. Yeah. Yeah, ball kid runs on a brand new football. Hairpin turn, heads back to the sideline. Game clock stopped, 44 seconds. Anderson on third down. There's the give. This is Alou to the right side, breaking free. First down and more. Alou on his feet inside the five, and there are no penalties this time. Well, Reggie Lucas, Lyndon Dillard having confidence to keep it on the ground. Similar play to before, going back to Alou. Spins out of the tackle and just refuses to go down and now on the doorstep. What a play. Checkered flag waving. 30 seconds and counting. First and goal. The handoff and the stop of Alou. And look at the Huskies dig after that ball. Wake Forest does have two timeouts left. They will let the clock tick down here. Second and goal. The fans are screaming for timeout, but hey, Reggie Lucas has been here for 15 years. He knows how many timeouts he has and when he wants to take it. And he will take it right now at 4.4. So indeed, the game will be on the foot of Evan Helfrich. He connected on a 29-yard field goal early in the second quarter to tie the game. Wake Forest has never led tonight. They have been painted into a corner about three different times in this second half on fourth down defensively and made stops. Somehow they're still tied, and now somehow Helfridge can win it for Wake Forest. This is what we thought. This is what happens in rivalry games. Both teams has big plays, big quarters. But we just thought it would be down to the wire. And Evan Helfridge, a great kicker. Coach Lucas. Uh, so much confidence in him and his ability, especially in clutch moments. Now with Helfrich, this is really no more than an extra point. The only thing is the mark of the football, the spot is on the very Far right hash. hash. Now he's a right-footed kicker, so that might not bother him much. You know you'll get a rush yeah. from Heritage selling out. All right, so this will technically be about a 24-yarder to win it. Wake Forest, undefeated in conference play. Herbert Pringle will be the holder. And is Helfrich going to be the hero on homecoming for Wake Forest? And a whistle blown before the kick is booted in. And again, Heritage was out of timeouts. So that can't be what was called. Looks like it was offside. It's offside, it's on Heritage. So. That will inch Helfrich a little bit first. When Wood is running through Wallace Clark's mind. The Huskies have done everything but win this football game. But just vital mistakes at key moments in this second half has now allowed Wake Forest basically an extra point distance field goal to win it. Helfrich to be the hero. Clean snap. Wake Forest wins it. Helfrich knocks it home at the gun. And Wake Forest remains unbeaten. They move to 3-0. A 13-10 win over rival Heritage. Wake Forest. 
finding a way. Going all the way to the wire. And Helfrich coming through in the clutch. The senior coming through in this ball game. And you see him coming over the sideline. What a moment for him in Wake Forest. Just continuing to battle and beating the Crosstown rival. 20-yard field goal for Helfrich. Wake Forest to 3-0 in the next six. And a heartbreaking loss for Heritage. We're coming back. Player of the game, interview of the head coach, Reggie Lucas, and the Cougar celebration when we return to Wake Forest. That was a classic tonight on Papa John's Friday Night Rivals. 13-10, Wake Forest over Heritage, and Evan Helfrich field goal at the gun to win it. Madison Little is with the head coach of Wake Forest and a happy pack of Cougars. In a game that came down to the wire, I'm with the winning Cougars, and it's time for my favorite part. We're going to give away some awards. The first award tonight is the U.S. Army Be All You Can Be Player of the Game. That's presented by Staff Sergeant Amber Mooney, and that goes to the guy who came in clutch tonight, the kicker, Evan Helfrich. And now, Coach, this came down to the wire, like I said. How much trust do you have in this guy standing to my right? Oh, absolutely. You saw what he did last week. He repeated it this week. He's a three. He's a two-time all-conference um, kicker of the year and looked like he's on track to do it again. Well, your fans filled the stadium tonight hoping for a Cougar win. This is your home community. What does it mean to be able to give it to them? What an awesome feeling and, and way to win it against a rivalry team like Heritage who played their butts off, so my hat goes off of them. But these guys deserve to celebrate tonight. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Coach. Here's your trophy. Go celebrate with your team. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, Jay. Wake Forest gets to 3-0 in conference play. They found a way. What a game. And I'll tell you, he, he said it. Both teams should be so proud of how they played. And this was a rivalry game. It was fun to watch what it meant to both communities. Congratulations to Wake Forest finding a way in the fourth quarter to get a big win. And Helfrich wins it for Wake Forest 13-10. All of us would like to take a minute and thank the wonderful folks at Papa John's Arthritis Knee Pain Centers, Tatum and Atkinson, who make all these games possible for everyone watching. We would also like to thank our other great supporters for their contributions to Friday Night Rivals. They would be the U.S. Army, Original Grills, the United States Marine Corps, Air Experts Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, Leith Acura, NC Safe, UNC Publix, and NC DHHS. We'd also like to thank tonight's participating high schools and all of their administrators for their support. Heritage High School and right here at Wake Forest. Next Friday, Jay and I and Madison will be with Apex Friendship as they take on Middle Creek. That is next Friday. So for Madison, for Jay, our entire crew, Patrick Keen is from Wake Forest. Enjoy your weekend. What a rivalry win. Wake Forest takes down Heritage 13-10. So long from Wake Forest. Ever since my boots first hit these streets, had to scratch a claw, made me hard.